In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. We're told in St. Mark another time, he went into the synagogue and there was a man present whose hand was withered. And they were watching him to see if he would cure him on the Sabbath day, hoping for something to charge him with. He said to the man with the withered hand, get up and stand in the middle. Then he said to them, is it permitted on the Sabbath day to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill. But they said nothing. Then he looked angrily around at them, grieved to find them so obstinate, and said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out, and began at once to plot with the Herodians against him, discussing how to destroy him. And so on this occasion, our Lord enters the synagogue. It was a Sabbath day, and there was a man there with a withered hand. St. Luke gives greater detail. It said it was his right hand. And the scribes and Pharisees, always attentive, watching, to see if he would heal on the Sabbath day, something that was forbidden. The Pharisaical interpretation of the law allowed healing on the Sabbath only if there was danger of death. And this clearly was not the case with this man. He had come into the synagogue with his hope placed in Christ. And our Lord was well aware of the thought processes and intrigues of those who are more guided by the letter of the law than by the spirit of the law. Often in scripture, we see this great contrast, the mind and heart of Christ, as opposed to the mind and heart of the Pharisees. And so our Lord says to the sick man, come and stand here. And so he rose and stood there. And Jesus, looking up, fixed his gaze on them and said to the man, stretch out your hand. In spite of all his previous experiences, perhaps at stretching out his hand, the man made an effort to do so. To do as the Lord had told him. And his hand was restored. Above all, the man was cured by the divine power of Christ's words. But it's also true that he was cured through his docility in exerting himself to carry out precisely what had been asked of him. Often our Lord doesn't ask us to climb Mount Everest to do all sorts of difficult things, challenging things, but often he does ask us for little things, little things each day, our little efforts in our work, our little efforts in our apostolate. He asks us to do those things that he has communicated to us in spiritual direction or in confession, or through our spiritual reading or in our prayer. And it may be that great miracles depend on our just doing what we have been asked to do. Sometimes it's very simple. There was a Hollywood actress once who won an Oscar. And when she went up to receive the Oscar, she told her little story about how she came to win this Oscar. And she said, you know, I hadn't worked for two years and this role came up in this particular movie. But I didn't like it. 
I thought this was not my cup of tea. This is not my character. This is not my type of role. This is not my this, this is not my that. But my agent said to me, Louise, take the job and be quiet. Except he used words that I can't use in this meditation. And so she said, so I took the job and I won the Oscar. There may be a series of little things in our marriage, in our family life, in our work, in our study, in our apostolate that we're asked to do. And when we try and do those things in spite of how we might feel, and then God comes along and works all sorts of amazing things. And this is the way with the miracles of grace. When we're confronted with deficiencies which seem insurmountable, we feel very small in the face of the great ideas that God is placing in front of us or by apostolic goals, which might seem to be too lofty or difficult. The Lord asks us for a, a special kind of effort, to put our faith and trust in him. And that attitude on the one hand consists in confidence in him, faith, abandonment, hope, trust, shown by our having recourse to the supernatural means available prayer, mortification. And on the other hand, it consists in doing what we can, listening to what he tells us in the intimacy of our prayer or through spiritual direction, doing what we can. Many years ago, there was an old Irish Archbishop of Nairobi, has a recent biography written about him, sending missionary priests out to difficult areas on furrowed lands. And he would just tell them, just do what you can. There's a lot of wisdom in that. But God has great things attached to those little efforts that we make. And some fathers of the church have seen in the words of our Lord, stretch out your hand the need to exercise the virtues. What is there that you could do? Well, I could improve in my punctuality or in my order or in my temperance or my justice or my kindness or my patience or industriousness or other virtues. All those things are within our reach. I could be a little bit better in the way that I put virtues into practice. And we can grow in the exercise of those virtues by performing small acts of those virtues that we need to acquire every day. Taking small steps towards the goal we, wish to, we, we want to reach. Which can have an enormous impact on our family, on our children, on our grandchildren, on our neighbours. If we concentrate on what we're doing, and often God does wonders through our seemingly small efforts. If the man with the withered hand had placed his reliance on his own previous experience of stretching out his hand many times, rather than on the word of the Lord, he might not have done the little thing that our Lord asked of him. And he might have spent the rest of his life with his disability uncured. And so virtues are formed day by day. Sanctity is forged by being faithful in details, in everyday things, in actions which might seem irrelevant, if not vivified by grace. And so St. Maria says in the forge, we need to smooth off the rough, rough edges a little more each day, just as if we were working on stone or wood and get rid of the defects in our own lives with the spirit of penance, with small mortifications. Jesus Christ will later make up for whatever is lacking. And so it's really he who makes sanctity a reality. It is Christ who moves souls. 
Thus, he wants to take into account our collaboration, which we give by obeying in that which has been pointed out to us, even though it might seem insignificant, as in the case of stretching out one's hands. If you remember the other story in the scriptures of Naaman the Syrian, told to go and wash seven times in the Jordan. And he was a bit put off because he thought this great prophet would ask him to do some tremendous things. But he was just asked to go and do a simple things. And it took a little girl to come along and put him right. If you were asked to do all sorts of amazing things, well, you might go and do them. Now that he's asked you just to do a simple thing, why don't you just do it? And so listening to the wisdom of this little girl, he just went and did what he was asked. And he achieved his cure. And so all of this can lead us to a cheerful ascetical struggle in which we never tire. Our power resides in what is small. Some little thing you may say offhand to one of your children. Just one day when you happen to be there or some topic comes up in conversation can last a lifetime. You're implanting values, you're changing society, you're building up a whole new civilization of love. And so that struggle in little things and what's within our reach is very important. When our Lord says, stretch out your hand, he's saying to us, push yourself in the area of those little things which constitute the fabric of your day teaching this child to put their toys back in the box, or teaching this kid to make their bed, or saying it for the 500th time. Here in Nairobi, the chairman of the board of one of the most important banks gave a talk recently to all the children of all the employees of the bank. And so the parents were very happy. Their child was going to get a talk from this big shot. Maybe he would tell them how to be CEO of a bank or chairman of the board. But one of the main messages of this chairman of the board to these young people was that if you want to be successful in life, you've got to start by making your bed in the morning. And so the mothers were very happy because they told their sons, I've told you 500 times you have to make your bed. They were happy to hear this from the chairman of a bank. So sometimes the little things can be important in forging a character, in building up a human person, in making a personality. And often we may not achieve our goals that we aim at because we're not interiorly convinced of the need for divine grace, which makes our small efforts effective. And lukewarmness can paralyze the exercise of the virtues. Whereas love can give it wings. Love has been the great engine of the saints. Lukewarmness can make the smallest effort seem too difficult. Another phrase for this could be the old age of the spirit. Sometimes you can meet elderly people who are full of youthfulness and vitality. But you can meet teenagers who are full of the old age of the spirit. Oh, I can't make my bed. Oh, it's too difficult. Oh, I feel so tired. Any little effort seems to cost an awful lot. And so maybe that's, that's email that we have to send or a call that we should make. Our punctuality in carrying out some daily plan that we have for our life. A little grain of sand can become a mountain. The lukewarm person thinks that even though our Lord may ask me to stretch out my hand, it's too much to ask. And so as a result of that belief, well, he doesn't stretch out his hand and he's not cured. Love, on the other hand, draws out an abundant supernatural effectiveness from the small acts of virtue that we can perform from morning to night. St. Rosa Maria says, a little act 
done for love is worth so much. A little act when you pick up a paper clip off the floor or a piece of fluff, or you close a door properly, or you open a window, and you try to do it with love. That love forges virtues, eliminates defects, and kindles in us the desire for holiness, precisely in the place where we've been placed. And just as drops of water wear the rock smooth and eventually penetrates it, our repeated good deeds create habits, solid steps in virtue. Example in the family that children cannot argue with. Example of truth, of a life of faith lived out in conviction, maybe silent conviction, but it leaves its mark. All these little things keep the virtues alive and increase them. And charity in particular is strengthened by little actions which can scarcely seem important. Putting on a good face, but it's not easy to do so. Smiling, welcoming people home. Creating an agreeable climate around us, even when we're tired, so that I forget about my tiredness. Often we solve all our own problems by thinking about the others. Not speaking of things that annoy or create difficulties for others. Not growing impatient in rush hour traffic. Helping a friend who may be falling behind in their work. Lending one's study notes to someone who may have been sick. And so deeply rooted effects our egoism, our envy, our laziness, are conquered by trying to relive this scene of the gospel, recalling Christ's command to stretch out your hand. And so all of us improve if with God's grace we struggle in the little things, getting up when we should, and not only later, having regard to care and order in our, in our way of dressing or in our books, constantly placing order in the things around us. We improve when we try to serve those who live with us without their noticing. When we try to think less about our health, our personal worries. We should know how to make a good choice of entertainment in our home, not movies or TV programs that we watch. We come across something that's not convenient, well, we have to try and turn it off. We've made a bad choice. In all those situations, our Lord is saying to us, stretch out your hand. And so in spite of having failed on many other occasions, possibly like this fellow with the withered hand who many times stretched out his hand and nothing happened, we can overcome our incapacity by making small efforts which come by means of the inspirations of the Holy Spirit and through the suggestions we receive in spiritual direction. That's one of the reasons why we have to expose ourselves to formative activities, because we need to hear things from time to time. We need to be reminded, the psychology of repetition. We need to place ourselves in situations where the Holy Spirit can reach us and clearly, and let him speak to us, to give us ideas. Along with God's grace, which we can rely upon, holiness also depends in a large measure on ourselves, on our own personal effort, on our docility, trying to be unflagging in our efforts, constant, because we know those formative activities are instruments of the Holy Spirit a monthly recollection, a yearly retreat. It said of St. Thomas Aquinas that he was a man of few words, but one day his sister asked him what was needed in order for her to be a saint. And without blinking, he said to want it. And so we have to want this goal of our Christian vocation. We can ask our Lord that we might come to him each day wanting to be holy with 
deeper desires all the time. Being obedient in our struggle to achieve the specific goals that have been set out for us in spiritual direction. Which may mean that we should write those things down, look at them on a daily basis or a few times a day, be very focused. If a footballer is trying to win the Champions League and he knows there's some little defect in his game or a top class tennis player wants to win Wimbledon, well, he'll be looking at those little defects of his game pointed out by his coach. He'll be looking at it a hundred times a day because a lot depends on that. And so the man with the withered hand was docile to the words of Christ. He got up in the midst of everyone as the Lord had asked of him. He listened to his words, telling him to stretch out his diseased hand. And so spiritual direction is geared to the Holy Spirit's intimate action within each soul, unceasingly suggesting small conquests which dispose us to receive additional graces. Push in this particular virtue now, take care of this other thing, look after that other soul. When a Christian does all he or she can so that virtues develop in their soul, like removing obstacles, distancing themselves from locations of sin, fighting resolutely and decisively at the first appearance of temptations, well, then God generously supplies new help to strengthen incipient virtues. He grants the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which perfects the habits already formed by grace. More fortitude, more charity. Our Lord wants us to have a true desire for holiness. A desire that's expressed in specific deeds. Many of the saints talk about how love is deeds, not sweet words. Our Lord wants us to show with our actions that we're really serious. And so in the interior life, general ideas are not enough. St. Jose Maria says in the way, have you seen how that imposing building was constructed, one brick after another, thousands, but one at a time, and bags and bags of cement, one by one, and stone upon stone, each of them insignificant compared with the massive whole, and beams of steel, and men working hour after hour and day after day. Did you see how that imposing building was constructed? by dint of little things. And so somebody said once that the whole of architecture begins by placing one brick on top of another. If you're at a wall sometime, look a little bit more closely at the bricks that are at the very bottom of the wall that support all the others. That's how God wants us to be in our spiritual life. Often when people talk of holiness, they may mention it in its more striking aspects, the great trials, the extraordinary circumstances, perhaps even martyrdom, novelty, spectacular things. As if Christian life exercised with all its consequences necessarily consisted in these things and were meant only for a few exceptional persons. As if our Lord had decided to be satisfied with a, a second class Christian life for the majority of people. But the contrary is the truth. The Lord calls everyone to holiness. The very busy mother with children and hardly enough time to manage her household affairs. The businessman, the student. The attendant in a department store. To all of us, the Holy Spirit says, this is the will of God, your sanctification. In St. Paul to the Thessalonians. And that will <clears throat> is effective. Because God takes into account all the circumstances of our life through which we shall pass. The ups and the downs, the highs and the lows. And he gives us the grace needed for us to act in a holy manner. No matter what 
the external or internal circumstances of our life may be. And so to grow in virtue, we have to try and pay attention to what our Lord is saying to us, often through intermediaries. And we have to put that advice into practice. Like that agent said to that Hollywood actress, take the job and be quiet. Often in fulfilling our duties, but may not be very attractive. We're just called to take the job and be quiet, get it done, carry on, finish it. Our Lady in Nazareth gives us a wonderful example of docility. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. John Paul II says she pronounced those words of total availability to God's plans. And the spirit began in her the realization of the plan of salvation. Pope St. John Paul says that her whole vocation was like a pilgrimage of faith. Faith put into practice in little things. And so we can ask our mother to help us to be ever more docile to the Holy Spirit, growing in virtue by struggling to attain the little goals of each day. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you have communicated to me during this meditation. I ask your help to put them into practice. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.